Hi book lovers, I'm back and this is for illustration lovers as well today. I thought I would show you just a small handful of the illustrators that I particularly adore, the ones that I'm obsessed with, inspired by, mesmerized by and it would just be a small small handful, I might do another one down the track because of course there are countless. So this is just a random selection of some of my very favorites. The first I've talked about quite a bit and that's Owen Davy. He is a British creator. Uh, he's done quite a few books but then he started this series with Mad About Monkeys. He's since gone on to do Smart About Sharks and I even know the order they were published in. Crazy About Cats, Bonkers About Beetles, Fanatical About Frogs, and his recent one just out in the last few weeks, Obsessive About Octopuses. Have a look at that colour. His use of colour is so exquisitely beautiful. His look at the styling of these of these cover of this cover art. Unbelievably beautiful. This is Flying Eye Books. He's such a graphic design talent. I'm just going to show you a little peek inside the books. His ability to select really poignant kid-centric information for the books, his ability to obviously I'm sure he's done the layout and design to couple this information with striking illustration in a way that will engage children. It's just exciting and fresh and fabulous and he's ever an inspiration of mine. Right, next I'll continue on with the graphic design theme, another obsession, uh, Dieter Braun. Uh, he's a German fellow who creates these astonishing illustrations. Again he's done quite a few books, there's a mountains one. These two are a companion books, Wild Animals of the North and Wild Animals of the South. Just look at the exquisite, look at the detail around, around the tiger's uh, face here and just his his angles, the way he's sort of, uh, you know, this one was sort of looking down and along at the tiger, would have been so easy just to draw the face or just to draw the body straight on, but his perspectives are just superb. Uh, this book is absolutely superb. It's got gorgeous matte paper. And I mean, even look at the back here. Look how special. Just look at these illustrations, the colour, the detail textures. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see these a bit better. How superb are they? Really talented and even on the front cover you can see the texture that he's used in the text. Um, super super talented fellow, absolutely adore and am, am inspired by his work. On the graphic design theme, homegrown talent, of course, Philip and Laura Bunting. Uh, Mopoke was such a striking book when I first saw it. Such a simple concept for the younger children, uh, the younger child. It is very low. Look at those divine end papers. Very low on text. This is published by Scholastic, by the way. Quirky, cool, funny, simple and just strikingly designed. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, and then this one, Lyrebird, which has just come out this year, I believe, yeah. And uh, that's alongside uh, Phil's wife, Laura. And again, just, you know, design savvy duo, these guys, really, really talented. And again, this quirky, cool, fun, story, sorry, I'm failing with the uh, angles here. Beautiful colourways, adorable speech bubbles that allow the, the creatures to talk, lots of quirk, lots of humour, lots of fun, comic stripping, just beautiful, Ab absolute perfection and the humour is spot on. It's the type of humour that both adults and kids laugh at, which is rare to do. Pixar do it well. And Phil created this book that uh, is one of my favourites from last year, and I have a lot of favourites, so this is saying something. How did I get here? 
super quirky, super clever, which is really Phil's way. And it's just about the evolution of humankind. How did I get here? Again, this is Scholastic Omnibus. <laughs> That's heavy, man. Just beautiful humour. There's the Big Bang. Hello. Bonjour. Just the subtlety. Subtly inclusive, you know. Cultural diversity. Really, really beautifully done. I think these guys have got a real knack for quirk and humour, but poignancy. Does that make sense? Like, fancy a biscuit? I mean, just, just adorable. Love, love, love their work. Huge inspiration. All right, now. Oh, golly, I don't know where to start. I haven't got too many. Okay, I'll show you Carson uh, Ellis. I'm sure you've seen Carson Ellis's work. This is the first book of hers that I got. She's gone on to do um, Dewey's Tuck, which is a, a quirky book uh, using like a fake language. But just her, again, her colorways, her design elements, the whimsy is just superb. Love the details. Love that there are, her illustrations are pretty, but they've also got uh, a little bit of grunge to them. It's that lovely blending. Um, Isabel Arsenault does the same sort of thing. Really pretty and detailed and finely crafted, but also that little bit of, of grunge and rock and roll to them, if that makes sense. Just look at these exquisite illustrations. And again, that blending of beautiful whimsy and quirk and, uh, yeah, and, and a little bit of fun as well. Absolutely beautiful. Love, love, love her work. Follow her on Instagram. Uh, speaking of Isabel Arsenault, I'll just bring out her books next. I have a million, squillion million of them. I'll just show you some of them. This is one of my favourites, The Honey Bee, and this was written by uh, Kirsten Hall. This is, uh, just let me check the publisher, sorry, I forgot to mention them, Athenaeum. The Honey Bee. Really beautifully designed book, beautifully written, and of course Isabel's illustrations just take the book to a whole other level. Just have a look at those illustrations. Beyond superb. Love the use of a slight fluorescence as well in the illustrations. Love how the book has been designed with these gorgeous cinematic spreads that you know one minute they're panning in one minute they're panning out really beautiful I'll just zoom in on that one she has a delicious color palette as ever and oh, holy, delicious color palette and again that beautiful texture and gorgeous design in terms of uh, fitting the typography into the illustrations, into the spreads so beautifully. Works just divinely. I'd love to know if she also did the design on the book. I should probably look, have a look and see. Really, really special book. Another one of hers, she's recently paired with Mac Barnett. I love Mac's work. He's the author on this book. This is called Just Because by Walker Books. Uh, and again, that lovely sort of retro feel a little bit dark but also cute and whimsical look how gorgeous she has such movement to her illustrations and again love the design of this book with the circles carrying through the story and also of course on the covers really special lovely book poignant but um not schmaltzy very important this is one of my favourites of hers. This is written by Fanny Britt. It's called Jane, the Fox and Me and it's by Walker Books. And it's a delicious narrative. It's like a graphic novel. You can see here. Beautifully crafted. Really monochromatic colourways but works super effectively, particularly for the mood of the story. Just so, so gorgeous. Great for kids struggling to read this kind of book. Wonderful, love the little speech bubbles and her quirky uh, uh, characters that she draws. 
Uh, this is a similar one, Louis Undercover, again by Fanny Britt, and the publisher of these two books is Groundwood Books. That's a similar one. Look at that divine colour. The blues are superb. Love the yellow spine. And this is a similar story in terms of it has that almost graphic novel style cartoon strip. Beautiful. A little dark, special book. And this is probably, again, one of my favourites of hers, Cloth Lullaby. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, this was written by Amy Noveski. And it's actually a biographical style book. And uh, just as spiders spin their webs, Louis, Louise Bourgeois' mother was a weaver of tapestries before Louise became a world-renowned contemporary artist. She was an apprentice in her family's tapestry shop. And it just tells her story. I and mean, you can see by the cover, absolutely adore all of those beautiful details, beautiful pen work there. And you can have a little look inside, how gorgeous. She just has, again, that wonderful knack that I love, that whimsy, but that quirk, a little bit dark, um, and highly, highly imaginative, you know? Look at the detail in this. Really, really superbly done. This book has done very well. Something as simple, so simple, but so effective. Just love that she does, you know, it's just, she just does things differently. We all want different, we don't want the same. Another quick, um, quick one of hers, and I'll get on to the next person. This uh, You Belong Here, written by M.H. Clark and also illustrated by Isabel. And this is for younger children. It's just a lyrical sort of narrative. And Isabel's done these beautiful nature scapes with almost a, oh, what would you call it? It's almost like a soft focus blur that she does to her illustrations. Really superbly done. Just the texture on the plants. Let's see if I can find another. Oh, so, so lovely. I mean, look at the, the way the colour shifts here. Really, really beautiful. Love her work and I have some limited edition prints of hers as well. Someone who does similar illustration locally grown our fabulous Anna Walker. Anna's books are superbly crafted. They are again whimsical but uh, they have that real sort of um, modern charm as well. They're not overly traditional and Anna's books are often, uh, they've often got so subtly messaged so they do have some kind of lovely emotional messaging but it's so beautifully and subtly done and one of my favorites is Mr Huff um, which is about young Bill who's having a really bad day and Miss, you know Mr Huff the bad mood follows him along and what I love about Anna's work too is that her illustrations are quite global like this could be the middle of Sydney or it could be New York City or it could be uh, you know, um, in the middle of London somewhere or Prague. It's just, they've just got this universality to them. You just can never quite work out. Look, look how beautiful where the books are set and that's a good thing, that universality. I love how Anna is really brave with her illustrations in that she's not about perfectionism, she's about flow and spontaneity and, and allows the watercolour to take the illustration where it should go and I just adore that about her work the the imperfections not that they're imperfections but you know what I mean the imperfections are part of the emotional response in these books look just how beautiful and I always adore her plants and her trees always a special look at the brick detail on these superb uh, and of course she's done these lovely books for younger readers, the Alfie series is just divine. Love exploring all of the little bits and pieces she puts in the pages. The little details are just so cute. Again, beautifully designed books. And her use of patterning is a lot of fun. Girl after my own heart in that regard. This is another one, uh, Alfie's Lost Sharky, and of course uh, this, these ones, the Alfie ones are with Scholastic, and 
Mr Huff and Florette are with a Penguin Viking. I'm about to show you Florette now. Possibly one of my greatest uh, loves of all time, this book. Uh, I was just floored by it. It's just so delicately considered. The storyline is beautifully considered and crafted and the illustrations are beyond adorable. It's about a little girl who uh, moves to the city. Look at the end papers. How special. Moves to the city with her family. And here is the city. It's looking a little bit bereft of green. And uh, little May begins engaging with nature that she misses so much. And she starts by doing these lovely chalk drawings in the square. Can you see? And of course makes new friends. Look, this scene in particular, how poignant Anna has such a knack for, I don't know, just nailing the poignancy of childhood, the simplest little things, the way May has drawn all over the packing boxes. Just such a simple concept and so completely beautiful. And, of course, the day that they go walking and May discovers this. Oh, I'm covered with goosebumps. <laughs> and the ending is one of the best I have read in a children's picture book for sure. Superbly done, superbly crafted, and of course Anna has um, some of her creative processes are in paper cutting, so she will cut out all of these tiny little leaves and layer them by hand. She also makes beautiful little uh, felt dolls and does little stop motion videos, so she's an all-round creative talent. Love Anna's work. In a similar vein, uh, Gus Gordon is a big love of mine. Again, he's just he's just got that beautiful authenticity about him stacks and stacks of heart in his work in the storylines that he conceives also a real universality to them they could be anywhere these books could be set anywhere and uh yeah the last peach is is one of my favorites because it's just different it's unusual this is with penguin viking and i'll show you how unusual it is it's extremely immensely clever the ending is hysterically good and i'm not going to spoil it because you've got to get the book but uh, it's just about this conversation between two bugs over who gets to snaffle that last peach. And it's just a dialogue. Now, if you would have said to me, should I put dialogue in picture books, I would have slapped you on the hand because I don't think we should have too much dialogue in picture books. It's like coughing in the cinema. It breaks us out of the narrative. Uh, but, of course, Gus has so cleverly made the entire narrative just a conversation it's gorgeously done, it's quirky and it's cool uh, to help kids understand who's talking without having to say he said, she said. We have the narrative, uh, the um, dialogue narrative in different colours, so one is blue and one is red. Really simple concept. Love how Gus collages another fellow after my own heart. He uses old, uh, beautiful old catalogues like Sears and Roebuck catalogues and old French catalogues and uh, uses them in his work. You can see here. Just snippets of the uh, uh, typography and illustrations from catalogues. Even in the bug's wings, you can see there how he's used those different textures. This is a really good fun book. Kids will love it because it's super quirky. All right. All right, just a couple more I want to show you. Small handful. <laughs> I'm trying to be quick. My videos are too long. Uh, of course, uh, Sophie Blackhole, Caldecott Award winner. Twice, I believe now, Australian girl living in um, America, so divinely talented, such a beautiful person and her work is beyond gorgeous and uh, her accolades are well deserved. Hello Lighthouse is one of my favourites. I do have some others, they're piled away, they're in many, many rooms and I um, can't access them right now but I just wanted to show you Hello Lighthouse, I'm sure you have seen this. Um, just repeat everything I've said about these other creators. Just full of heart. Beautifully designed. Thoughtfully designed. Stunning colourways. Stacks of superb detail. I really love how Sophie does her waves. It's got that sort of retro Japanese sort of style to it. And uh, yeah, just the movement and the drama the gentleness, the cleverness, how she pulls in and out of scene. Uh, even when scenes are often the same, she's just so, so clever. Look at this perspective here. 
beautiful, beautiful work. So make sure you look her work up. Um, and before I show you my probably my favourite at the moment, I just wanted to quickly show you this new creator, Isabel Fuller. I met her on um, Instagram. And she's just so talented. I was following her artwork and then she started getting book contracts and that's absolutely no surprise. Um, I'm surprised it took so long and it didn't even take long. Uh, this one she illustrated, it's called Joy with Corinne Avarice as the author. And the publisher is... It is... Quarto Books, Words and Pictures. And I just love the joy in her illustrations, the colour joy. The detail, the precision, look at the cardigan on the little girl on the front here. Look at the cardigan, the detail. Look here. I can't draw butterflies for the life of me. They always turn out twee. But hers are super cool. Everything she does is super cool. Even grandma's little frock there. Oh, how super cool is that? The patterning. The cleverness of colour choice. Here again, Grandma's rug. The details. And the ability she has for visual narrative is really special. It has not gone unnoticed, Isabel. Look here. The quirk on the child's face. How she responds to things. Really, really special. Love her work, but the precision of her work in particular I love. And then just quickly this other one, written by Kate Davis. This is The uh, Incredible Hotel, and that's by Francis Lincoln Books. And again, the divine detail, just superbly crafted illustrations. You know that wonderful thing I've talked about before we slice open the house or the hotel and have, can have a look inside? And the character. She's a master, master of characterization. Look here. Couldn't you just see these people coming to life, being part of a film or just coming to life? So beautifully done. Her line work is superb and, uh, yeah, I just cannot wait for the next book she does. Right, last lot. This has been one of my greatest inspirations. Sorry for that banging. My son is in the garage uh, working out. I've set up a gym in there. Iggy Peck Architect was the first of these beautifully rhyming books by Andrea Beattie, illustrated by the illustrious David Roberts. These are published by Abrams. And I was blown away, absolutely blown away, when this book came out. So, of course, it's a reflection of, um, it's actually turned into a series of a bunch of kids who are all in the same class and what they aspire to be and grow up to be. And they have a stack of STEM topics through the series. Just look, the quirk, the cleverness, that retro styling, the fashion, beyond, beyond. I was just dying when I first read this. The simplicity of the layout, absolutely superb. Look at, look at. Look at the waist. Just strikingly, beautifully conceived and done. Could not love his work more. Uh, we'll just quickly show you the others in the series. I'm sure you know. Ada Twist, Scientist. Rosie Revere, Engineer. Sophia Valdez, Future Press. This is the newest. Hurry up, please. We want more. And I... Also, simply adored Happy Birthday, Madame Chapeau, which was a bit of a departure for Andrea Beatty uh, out of her other series. Again, the illustrations are unbelievably beautiful. I mean, David just has such a knack for designing exquisite uh, hats and costumes. And look here, the tiniest little details. And what I also love about his books is he puts in little little things that carry through. So there's actually a little mouse here, you might see. And the little mouse follows uh, follows Madame Chapeau through the book. Absolutely exquisite. And if you're a fashionista, oh my lord. Second last book, The Prince and the Porker. This is just another of David's work. This one's written by Peter Bentley and it's published by Anderson Press. Again, look at that exquisite detail. Look at the hair on the pigs. Pig. Prince and the pig. 
then those gorgeous characterizations. His his characters are superb, just like Isabel uh, Falath got that wonderful quirk to them. And the last one I'll show you for today, Suffragette, The Battle for Equality. This was written and illustrated by David, published by Two Hoots. Love Two Hoots books. I, I just, I have no words. I just have no words. The subject matter, uh, the layout, the design, the illustration, the concept, the, the research, the writing, everything is just exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. The detail is so completely beautiful. And David just has that knack for doing something that's modern but also looks traditional and like it could be plucked from the 15th century. He's phenomenal. He's absolutely phenomenal. I have poured over this book, the detail on this carriage. Oh, yeah. Okay, can you see where I got my inspiration from? All right, I think that's enough for now. I have many others that I'll share for, with you later if you like this, please click like and subscribe so I can keep going and develop a bit of a catalogue of works. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments who inspires you, what illustrators I should look up, and I bet I know them anyway. Bit of an obsession going there. Okay, thanks for coming back again, and I will be back with some more bookish inspiration soon. Okay, take care. Bye.